I mean, everything's a goddamn culture war. I know. I that's mean, what I love about astronomy. No one yeah. ever freaking wakes up and says, right. see that comet over there? Fucking, that's a right. Republican. There's a, <laughs> right. there's a, there's a, there's a Democrat astronaut. No, well, it, it also it makes it, you're studying things that are so immense and so spectacular that it makes all this stuff seem like nonsense. There's right. stuff that people fill their days up with complaining about. A fucking Barbie movie, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I mean, that would be it would be like someone who's a pacifist reviewing the Ultimate Fighting Championship, exactly. There's and a, saying they hit each other too much. Like that's what it's for. There's a joke about uh, Einstein goes to heaven, and uh, somebody comes up to him and says, "Oh, you're Albert Einstein. You know, you're great. I can't wait to talk to you." And Einstein says, "First, you must tell me your IQ." Uh, and he goes, uh, <laughs> the guy goes, oh, I have uh, 140 IQ. Oh, we could talk about the math and string theory and this and that. And then another guy comes up, oh, that's your IQ. It's, it's uh, 130. Oh, we could talk about uh, the stock market and we can talk about all these, uh, you know, financial, you know. And then someone comes up, I have 100 IQ. Uh, we could talk about culture wars. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, more of a tribal thing than anything with us. I think um, what's going on is just something that's like written into the human reward system. That there's a there's a lot of social value in being a part of a tribe. There's a lot of social value in being part of a committed ideology, whether it's a religion or a cult or politics. you know or politics. Well, that's what's impressive. Natural. I mean, you know, not to be too uh, overbearingly uh, praiseworthy, but you know, there's a Yiddish saying: if you stand in the middle of the road, you get hit from both sides of the street. Mm. <laughs> but you seem to like defy that. Um, you know, and it's always interesting to me if I talk to somebody. I, I talk to Noam Chomsky. I, I personally hate his politics or whatever. But if I'm talking about linguistics and aliens and communication. You know, I'll talk to them, but, you know, or I'll talk to Ben Shapiro. People just go, oh, why could you possibly platform him? Right. Ben doesn't need Brian Keating's help to platform him. That talk is nonsense. We don't, there's only one way to find the holes in someone. I mean, how many revealing interviews have you seen where people were supposedly platformed? And in those conversations, you reveal, like, the, the way that they look at the world is very flawed. Yeah. It's very easily pick apartable. You could just, like, go through it and say, well, this is illogical. This yeah. doesn't this doesn't fit in with the, the whole, your whole philosophy of freedom. Like, mm -hmm. there's so many things that are inconsistent with the way you view this one thing. Like, why do you view this one thing this way? I think the human mind hates ambiguity, right? I mean, mm. there's clear-cut benefits to being polarized because it simplifies it gives you a hack an algorithm say oh, like i can easily say well you should not have an abortion so therefore i must be in the people that say you should never have enough or like gun control like should you have like you know an ak-47 maybe should you have a tow a tank operated weapon probably not should you have a little boy well you have a little boy and fat man like yourself. But <laughs> it's not of that kind right not that explosive <laughs> so i think that but it's because human beings hate these schrodinger kind of like yes. ambiguities they just yeah. hate them and so they must cleave to the direction that they understand understand yeah it's a very unfortunate thing that doesn't get taught out of people and instead of that we teach them to um, subscribe to whatever ideology the teacher is promoting you know and I think that's a real issue with with people we need we need to give people the space to figure out things for themselves mm -hmm. and, and decide how they view all these different subjects not have this predetermined group of uh, questions and answers that you you know that these are these are that they're a part of the ideology you must subscribe to them wholeheartedly wholesale and and even by you like apparently so Lex mentioned that uh, Andrew Huberman's yeah. uh, Wikipedia page because you platformed RF. I'm like, the guy's a Kennedy, okay? First of all, he's Democrat. Right? Well, like, this is all that happened. If you don't, Andrew Huberman commented on a post that I made about Robert Kennedy Jr. He said, I think this is great. I hope more presidential candidates do long form podcasts. That's it. And so Wikipedia removed the research sec research section of his page. <laughs> He's got 70 public oh, yeah. published papers. It's highly cited. He's, he's... he's very well respected. And they removed that because they had decided that they were going to, I don't know what their thought process was, what their motivation was, but it appears that what they're doing is punishing him for what he said by labeling him in a very, in, um, they're maligning him in multiple different ways. I thought about saying like, well, you know who else Joe Rogan had on this guy named Peter Hotez? Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I try to have a lot of people on. <laughs> yeah, But, but so it's I, not, there's nothing wrong with having yeah. a guy who's running for president uh, on a podcast to discuss things. Like, you, you, what are you talking about? It's nonsense. Yeah. 
And the way they did that to Huberman, when he was just saying that he hopes more presidential candidates do long form form podcasts, that's you can't do that. Mm -hmm. That's that's like that's tyrants do shit like that. That's horrible. 